So the question is, do I need mini DSP for my subwoofers? Having multiple subs in my home theater led to the idea of adding a mini DSP in the mix for proper subwoofer management. But because of how good the subs already sounded, I toggled with the idea of getting one. I asked myself questions such as, do I really need this in order to properly manage my subs? Can it really improve the sound quality of my bass? And if so, how much? Do I have the patience to learn how to use REW and Mini DSP? And more importantly, what if I spend my money to dive into this and it doesn't live up to the hype? Well, after a while of deliberating on the idea of getting one, I decided to pull the trigger and I got it. It comes in. I'm excited to, to get everything hooked up. I get it unboxed, um, looking to getting everything hooked up and configured. But I'm going to tell you, just getting it hooked up in itself is a challenge. But after getting every getting over the hurdles of learning how to get everything connected, taking measurements, making tweaks, more measurements, more tweaks, EQ with a room curve, export the EQ file, import the EQ file into mini DSP, literally hours of configurations. When I finally heard the result, my reaction was simply, okay, sounds good, but it also sounded good prior to hours of configurations. I wasn't blown away. And to be honest, I was a little disappointed because I was looking forward to this amazing sound difference and it simply fell short of that. So you may wonder, did I not configure it properly? Or is it that the Yamaha calibration is just that good? The answer to that question is the Yamaha calibration is just that good. I've been telling y'all Yamaha is the shit, baby. So I removed the D mini DSP from the equation, ran a fresh calibration and returned my system to where it was before mini DSP. It sounded amazing as usual, and I wanted to create a baseline to have something to measure to. So I took a measurement of what my subs were doing right off of the Yamaha uh, YPAL calibration. I then compared my post EQ mini DSP measurement to the Yamaha calibration. And here's the results. This is what my subs are doing. No tweaks, no changes. This is directly what the results that I'm getting from the YPAL calibrations. This is amazing. I think this is an amazing response. Um, having four subwoofers and allowing the receiver to uh, measure and configure everything all on its own. If I wanted to, I can flatten this response out even more by chain making changes to the parametric EQ within the receiver but just from a a raw data and there's no smoothing on this this graph this is the raw data coming straight off of what the the uh, subs are doing from the YPAL calibration I think this is amazing but after time of uh, doing all the configs and and doing the room curve I was able to smooth this this response out even further with the mini DSP. Here is what my response is now after applying the settings in mini DSP. This is a beautiful flat response. Only a few hills and valleys, peaks and knolls, whatever you want to call it. Now here is the difference between the Yamaha, um, what the Yamaha is doing on its own and the hours of configurations from mini DSP is that past 40 Hertz, the Yamaha starts to drop off. Whereas my room curve allows me to maintain roughly 90 DB throughout the frequency range that I'm going to be using prior to adding DSP or mini DSP into the mix. I was cutting the S sixties off at 40 Hertz. So if you look at this, this chart from 40 Hertz and below the Yamaha's calibration was doing right. It was doing it damn near the same thing that the mini DSP is doing. I'm right there with mini DSP with the exception of this boost up here 
which is uh, about 22 hertz had a little boost not bad though that little rumble at 22 hertz is beautiful i love bass i'm a bass head i love the bass so having a little extra at 22 hertz is actually a beautiful thing when you watch your movies but nonetheless um at 40 hertz and above the mini dsp is doing a little better this 5 db between the two is an audible difference so you'll be able to hear the difference with the mini dsp i'm getting a little more slam a little more bumps and thumps um and it sounds amazing it sounds so damn good um now i was cutting at 40 hertz before mini dsp but in order to take advantage of this room curve I'm going to cut at 60 hertz. I'm now cutting at 60 hertz. No need to go up to 80. Why? Why do I need to go up to 80? The S60s are capable of getting down to 26 hertz. And there's absolutely no reason. They, they work flawlessly at 40 hertz. So nonetheless, I'm going to cut the S60s at uh, 60 hertz instead. And there we go. I mean, very close, but, you know... <clears throat> mini dsp is a little better but nonetheless this the, the response between what i was getting prior to mini dsp and what i was getting after is very similar so that goes back to the question at hand do i need mini dsp and the answer is simple no you don't need it did it improve the sound quality of my subs yeah but not enough to really justify the challenges that you have to go through to get the end result if mini DSP was as simple as pushing the go button and it was able to go out, measure, make adjustments, configure your subs and everything all in one swoop, it would be pure gold. But unfortunately, it's not that easy. Unlike the mini DSP, however, the Yamaha is that easy. But the major contributing factor to the excellent base management of my system before adding mini DSP is the brilliance of that Yamaha receiver. See, the Yamaha Avantage 2080 has advanced wipeout calibrations, two independent sub outs that allow the subs to be aligned properly, EQ'd and leveled separately, and, a, and an adjustable parametric EQ. So I can actually do most of the same things with uh, my receiver that I can with Mini DSP. And the cherry on top is it takes less than 10 minutes, 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes to run a complete to complete a multi-point calibration with the Yamaha receiver. So why spend the hours and spend the money to dive into adding mini DSP if you're not gonna get much out of it? Now here's the caveat of it all. I say this all the time. Every system is different. Every system is different. What works for your system may not necessarily work best for my system, vice versa. What works best for my system may not work best for your system. You may not have a receiver with independent subwoofers out, sub outs. You may have multiple subs with different makes and models and have different performance attributes. You may have a, a weird shaped room um, with acoustical challenge or just the opposite. You may have the perfect shape room and things works out much smoother. There's multiple reasons, that's my point. There's multiple reasons where you may benefit greatly from using a mini DSP. But I'm gonna say this, if you are considering getting a mini DSP, my suggestion, and it's just me, it's just my suggestion, is to first get a calibration mic, such as the Umic One from mini DSP, and install room. When you do this, you can then have the ability to start taking measurements, seeing exactly what your system is doing. Um, and you can make tweaks right from your receiver and go from there. REW is very powerful and it is very useful. Connect everything, run some sweeps, see what your subs are doing, make tweaks and repeat that process until you get a flatter response and, and your response looks the way that you are, that you want it to look. I think this is a more user-friendly method and um, you end up with similar results. However, if you are not obtaining the results that you're looking for, doing that method 
then perhaps you may need mini DSP. I mean, it's a great tool. It does work. Look at this response. That is beautiful, baby. And it sounds so good. Oh my God. It sounds good. Rhythmic subs, man. Let me, bruh. I'm not going to, I'm not going to brag on the rhythmic the rhythmics too much, but I'm going to tell you, geez, those rhythmics are kick ass sea bass, man. I'm telling you, but nonetheless, here it is. Um, that's, that answers the question. I know, uh, you know, some people that are just like me wondering if you should get it. And the answer is maybe, maybe not. So, you know, like I say, get your, get the mic, install rule. It's a free program. Start taking measurements and see what your system is doing. And then you can make a, a decision from there. It's not going to hurt anything. It's a lot cheaper to get a mic. The mic is 75 bucks. Rue is free. You know what I mean? So get those two. And, you know, there's so many. Look, there's SPL meters. There's so many sound generators. There's so much that you can do with um, REW. So get that. And um, I think, uh, look at it. There we go. There, I was still had my photos up but nonetheless there's there's this is a very powerful tool start taking measurements and i think you will really enjoy some of the results um i'm about to get into a video on showing how to actually uh, make some changes within your receivers so that you can flatten out the response without having to connect a sound processor such as dsp mini dsp take care Okay, now let's say I just ran some sweeps and I don't too much care for how they look or I just want to tweak them a little bit and I want to make manual configuration changes in the receiver to address the uh, responses that I'm getting. The first thing that I'm going to do is to measure each subwoofer or subsets separately, address those and then bring them all together and address them as a whole. So let's use a scenario that my left speaker is peaking around 22 Hertz and I want to bring that down. Let's go into the par parametric EQ and address that. Down here in the parametric EQ, notice I'm using the, um, the factory preset front. Let's go up to manual, go into the manual. And the first thing that I want to do is copy all the data from front over to manual. So it's going to import all the settings from the EQ setting that I like to listen to and put it into the manual. That way it doesn't, I can retain all of the settings for all of the other speakers and only change the speaker that I want to manually change. So copy in the data, I'm good to go. Now all of my other speakers are still the same and I can go in and address the 22 Hertz on that sub that I want to change. So in here, when I look at the first band, it's already set at 31.3. Let's drop that to the closest frequency that we can get to that 22 Hertz that I want to pull down. Don't have to be exactly on that particular frequency because that's where the Q factor comes into place. So now that I'm at 19.7, and I have a Q factor of one. The Q factor is actually the bandwidth of how many different frequencies you're going to change to either the left or right of that particular frequency. So 19.7 is the actual peak frequency. But the bandwidth is also, it, it addresses frequencies to the left and right of your center frequency or your peak frequency. The higher the bandwidth, the, sh the more shallow the higher the Q factor, the more shallow the bandwidth is. The lower the Q factor, the wider the bandwidth is. So if I have a low Q factor, that means I'm affecting more frequencies to the right or left of that 19.7. So let's say I'm trying to get to 22. I'm going to leave the Q at 1. I'm going to then bring the gain down here. And just for illustration purposes, I'm going to change the Q factor to a higher Q and which is going to remove bandwidth and watch what happens. So I'm going to raise this up 
And then you can see as I increase the Q, the more shallow that hill gets so that I'm only affecting 19.7. But in our scenario, like I said, we're trying to get to 22 hertz. So we're going to keep the bandwidth a little low. So I know that at this point, using a 1Q factor, the Q factor of 1, I know I can get to that 22 hertz. And I'm going to continue to do this for each other frequency. Either I want to raise, the, if it's a null, I want to raise it a little bit. If it's a peak, I want to bring it down a little bit. You do this to address and, and try to smooth out that curve as much as possible. You continue to repeat this. You, you know, after this, I've made this change. I'm going to run another sweep. Measure it again. See what it looks like now. See exactly what it's doing. And then continue to make changes and tweaks that way. Do the same thing for the uh, second sub. And then you bring them both together. And let's say together, eh, it doesn't look quite, something's a little off. And you want to play around with, let's say, the timing of the subs. Let's say I need to time align my subs. How would I do that? I am going to go into distance. Now, every, this is in milliseconds, every foot transposes, Trans, will transpose into one millisecond. Every millisecond is a foot in the receiver. So think about it in this regard. The subwoofers that are further away from you are going to take more time. The sound from the subwoofers that are further away from you are going to take more time to hit your seating position versus the subs that are closer to you. Naturally, the sound is going to hit your ears a little faster. So what you want to do is slow down the timing a little bit to the subwoofers that are closest to you. The way we do that is by removing distance for every distance. Remember, for every millisecond is a foot. If I remove a foot and, and um, let's say my L12s are getting to the listening position a little too fast, I can slow those down, add a little bit of delay to the L12s by removing distance. Real simple. Now, one thing that you should be doing prior to running any measurements is to, is to um, gain match and level set your subs. You gain match your subs by uh, setting the amp plate, setting the the, the volume trim on the amps of the subs, on the back of the subs, you set them to the same exact position. That's given you have um, identical subs. I got the two FVX15s up front. I'm gonna set the volume on the subs to the same exact position. That way I know each sub is giving off the same amount of power. And then, set my SPL meter at the seating position, and then I can change the levels of each sub individually. So let's say my left sub is hitting my seating position at 80 hertz. My right sub is hitting the sit seating position at 78 hertz, and I wanna increase um, my right sub by two decibels to match my left sub. I do that simply by changing the level here in the receiver. Very simple. Now, this is something that you should be doing before doing any calibrations. It's the same way when you, you run mini DSP, you have to, the first thing you do is to make sure that all your subs, you gain match and you level set all of the subs, making sure that each sub individually is, they're all hitting your seating position at the same DB level. They are matched at my, my, my L12s. Every single one of them are hitting the seating position at the same DB level. And then you take uh, measurements from there.